Welcome to another episode. Today is a very special day because we are meeting with Joseph. Joseph. Hello, everybody. My name is Joseph Salama, and this is our wonderful Aziza. In Arabic, Aziza means dearest one or most beloved, and this is our Aziza. Nice. A 1978 Type 2 tin top twin sliding camper van. Wow. Is it quite unusual to have two sliding doors? It is indeed. It's very, very, only very special vehicles have two sliding doors. But what is most interesting today is the drivetrain, isn't it? Ah, oh, c'est très magnifique, mon ami. <laughs> Let's have a look at the back. Let's start with the drivetrain. Tell oh, us everything. Then we can go back to your business and everything, but tell us about Aziza being fully electric. So uh, Aziza used to once upon a time be a two litre twin carb air cooled Ooh. original Volkswagen camper van. Very classic, very traditional, very old school. Indeed. And you brought it to the next generation. of Indeed, yeah. indeed. We w I was going to convert her with the Volkswagen EV upcycling unit okay. back in 2020 and 21, but that involved a significant amount of butchering, cutting, welding, and drilling of the chassis, which okay. means she was non, she would be non-reversible. And Aziza is my own special camper van I've owned for 18 years now. However, this unit that we've incorporated Felton's fabulous universal battery pack is completely reversible. Indeed, All you right. can put it back to fossil. Okay. Well, I don't think anyone will ever want to put it back to uh, petrol or gas. Uh, tell us a bit more. So you've got a 55 kilowatt hour battery pack Indeed. with a uh, CCS uh, capacity, I see. Indeed, 76 uh, kilowatts. Excellent. Uh, what is the rest of the drivetrain? So we have incorporated a Zonic motor, which okay. produces approximately 90 horsepower. So it's the 70, Zonic 70? I believe so. All right. And tell us about what it takes to design your own system because uh, we haven't mentioned it yet, but you don't want to do just one combi. You want to do tens or dozens or hundreds of Hundreds. <laughs> Global domination <laughs> is the name of the game. Excellent. And uh, first come, first serve, boys and girls. Okay. So yeah, tell us a bit more about the system and how you will eventually bring it to market. The system's quite straightforward, to be honest, which is ultimately the way we designed it. Conversion can be carried out within approximately three days. Uh, there is a battery swap feature built in, which I doubt you'll ever need to use because of the universal battery pack. Almost literally bulletproof. I think it's 21G it's been tested to. Yes, but also like several OEMs, especially in China, decided to try the option to offer uh, a battery swap option, but they kind of stopped because obviously it requires more batteries to start with. Absolutely. And, but the, the technology to charge, especially with CCS or Max in, in the US, means you charge the, the van or the bus or the vehicle so quickly, it almost doesn't make sense to have this option Indeed. charge term. Unless you're in a very remote location, say Indeed. in Africa, uh, Middle East, and, and the desert and you wanted to have way more range indeed um, but yeah going back to the drive sorry to interrupt you yeah. there is also one other very significant feature of the so two very significant features of the battery swap feature which is essentially we cannot sell a vehicle unless it has new battery modules yes. incorporated in the mm -hmm. battery pack due to warranty issues and, what, and so on and so forth however if and when people decided to build fleets of these vehicles for rental or leasing, mm -hmm. then it's a far more financially viable option to incorporate second life batteries. Yeah. It's also far more sustainable. Absolutely. In which case you would not need to provide a warranty because you would have your own supply and it reduces the cost by approximately 15, 16,000 pounds, which I believe is almost 20,000 euros or $20,000. Yes. So it, it has some advantages. Oh, yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. And, and, and the most, the one I like the most, however, extreme it may sound in the current point in time in the future when the hydrogen fuel cell is ready you bring well, you it could in the bring morning. your own option yes all right we are talking way longer terms of yeah. this is on the road we've driven this it works indeed and it works very good and it charges qu quite quick also at any ccs chargers yep. obviously type 2 also all right let's walk around the the bus uh, is that a big issue if I say van or do, is it really a bus? Is it a van? Is it Tomatoes, tomato. Okay. Um, so this was air cooled, obviously. Uh, do you keep any of the original cooling system to cool your electric system? Well, essentially the only significant cooling feature that does remain are these air ah, vents. Yes. They send air into the engine bay. Uh, however, the battery box motor inverter also has its own independent cooling system, okay. which makes these relatively redundant. However, we have 
incorporated them to some degree okay. in the build. So the rest of the cooling system will be under the bus? Yes. Okay, all right, and we'll have a look at it in a minute. So inside this one is still a camper, you can still fall down Yes, uh, indeed. The bench. I've, I've see, just completed see. a 2,984 kilometer EV rally, which we won in Europe okay. and uh, charged everywhere okay. without a problem, unless it was an underground car park that my uh, did not have oh, mobile phone reception. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. At times when I felt the need, like on the Dunkirk beach or awesome Amsterdam, I would simply... Oh, I see where you're going. <laughs> put these yeah. through. And if you'd like to come around here, Jerome. Uh, voila. Wow. Double bed. <laughs> All right. And if you open the uh, rear hatch, you can sleep while you watch the sunset. Yeah. <laughs> perfect, perfect, perfect. All right, what do we have under the mattress just here? Obviously, you would have the original we have just uh, drivetrain. Basically, sound deadening material. Okay. Not that we need it, but yeah. I like that feature. Yeah. And essentially, the battery box, motor, carrier, motor, inverter, and all the fancy electronics are within the engine bay underneath the mattress. Okay. Underneath the rock and roll bed, we have a storage area. Okay. All right. Which in this model is. In this particular vehicle in Aziza is the only storage under here. Okay. We put our bags and our med kit and, and whatnot. And it doubles as, as a boombox. Well, <laughs> we've got the speakers, yes. Yeah. You can put whatever spectacular sound system you like. Yeah. Essentially, we will be selling the unit to B2B and then the businesses will, the workshops that are onboarded, yeah. will sell them to their clients and also any kind of restoration or interior services your clients may like you can upsell those fancy sound systems pop tops cooker fridge sink all right joseph let's have a look inside in the cab please Ooh. so we have improved the system we built with volkswagen group components to a very significant level the only exterior modifications other than the charging hatch is the um are the two dials that are replaced okay. and this panel here that's bolted on Fancy radios are optional okay. extra. Yeah, okay. We have car, Apple CarPlay here. Um, okay, so we have upgraded the fan. Okay. So I'm not sure who is uh, familiar with the original fan, but this is very fancy. And it's way very more fast. effective and efficient than the original. Indeed, yeah. far more effective yeah. and efficient. Yeah. We have integrated also a defrost function. So if you look here on the dash, you can say, see defrost. Yeah. On the windscreen, you can see these tiny little lines. Yeah. And so basically what that means is if you have ice on the front of the windscreen or fog on the inside in under 60 seconds, it's gone. It's a clear windscreen, which is marvelous. I love it. It's one of my favorite features. This is an optional extra that does not come with the, con the conversion, come with the, force, come yeah, with the conversion yeah. unit. There but are, it, sorry. Yeah, in the UK, it's a very good uh, bonus to have. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Our next. Okay, so, so we have three, it's automatic, so drive, neutral, reverse. Yeah. We have four driving modes, sport, normal, Eco and Eco Plus, which are all, all the parameters of which can be adjusted. We have the state of charge, the handbrake or parking brake. We have the usage per kilowatt, miles per kilowatt. Mm -hmm. We can upgrade this to kilometers for Europe and the States. The range on the existing charge. This isn't accurate because we've been using sports mode for some time. We have the odometer. So in Aziza so far, we've covered 9,948 miles. Wow. And I'm now I'm 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 happy with her, you know, I'm happy to sell her to the world, sell, sell the unit, not yeah. my Aziza. We also have a trip computer. We can adjust the dimmer okay. the, on the display. We have a battery box temperature, an inverter motor temperature, and we also have a speed in miles per hour and how the percentage of the accelerator okay. pedal, so the harder I push it, the more it goes, just so you have a more inf enough information if you if you desire it when we accelerate on the road which you'll see shortly this orange bar here gets larger and larger when we accelerate okay. and when the regen braking comes you see it green here whenever you brake or when you slow down relative to which drive mode you're in the green bar at the which isn't visible now on top of the battery okay. will show perfect oem level isn't it well Aim for, this, aim for the stars, we'll reach Jupiter in no time. <laughs> we want to incorporate battery swap tech into all of our models yeah. and with some of our partners with Circular EV we are developing new units and also I aim to introduce hybrid conversion or sorry hybrid 
upgrade conversion units, which essentially will take a day or two to install, and essentially means you keep the fossil, the ICE drivetrain, a hybrid uh, unit is installed. So when you brake, it charges, mm -hmm. and when you accelerate, it releases that charge with the small motor powering, depends on which vehicle, but essentially the rear vehicle in commercial vehicles and small vans, so the T4 the T5. So more modern platforms than indeed, the classic bus. Indeed. Okay. We, it is our duty, our generation's duty to aim for the stars, decarbonize the world. Essentially, last last year, yeah. last a decade ago, we're really behind schedule. So yeah, it just makes sense. That's something I've always mentioned is we need to convert to electric uh, those white vans. They are the, the vehicles that drive the most. They do mm -hmm. like 50,000 miles a exactly. year and they use every single day. So often in the city running diesel engines. So that they are the one that needs to be either replaced with electric vans or even better repurposed as electric uh, vehicle. Indeed. Yeah. And, and some of them sometimes are already fitted with quite a bit of kit for the, the traders or specialists. It makes more sense to convert them to electric than to buy a new EV van and then keep the vehicle for months uh, to be uh, specially equipped for whatever you use, yeah, ambulance, uh, bank vault, or bank vans and things like that. All right, so what's uh, the next step for Aziza? You've done 10,000 miles across Europe and the UK. Uh, so the proof of concept, we know this works. I'm happy now. So what's the next step? How do you scale your system? So essentially we will be looking for global partners, not just in the UK and Europe, but also further afield in America, South America, okay. Asia, Africa. I have spoken to a number of people globally who are interested, but we need to first establish, perfect the recipe for manufacturing lines and streamline the process, introducing mm -hmm. autonomous processes in the, in, the, in, the, in the manufacturing line as much as possible. So Joseph, what's next once uh, you've sold all those hundreds of systems around the globe for this generation of Volkswagen buses? What's next? So in my quest for global domination, joke, <laughs> <laughs> I have created an organization called Circular EV, promoting fundamentally a circularity within the automotive industry, focusing on primarily decarbonization, uh, hero class EV, which we'll come to later on. We are, I have onboarded quite a few industry leading specialists for several reasons. The first and foremost is to establish an industry standard within our niche okay. globally to separate the, uh, the specialists from the non-specialists. So, so the general public know that they have, uh, the, so they can establish a sense of confidence in this market niche, in our market. I know that many people in my position are experiencing bad press from, bad publicity from uh, the amateurs who are Nothing personal, guys. I think it's very admirable you're doing it in, in your shed in the backyard. But essentially, as a, from a professional standpoint, for, we need premium service providers. One of those providers is Felton, who we've developed this unit with. Historically, it was Volkswagen Group Components. However, in which I signed the partners, the UK, the sole UK partnership agreement for the whole of the UK, Scotland, Northern Ireland, Wales and England. However, uh, during COVID, their operation was irreversibly impacted, ultimately through global supply chains. Yet there was other variables I won't mention today. So the regen braking is a very good question, Jerome. Ultimately, the regen braking is determined by the drive mode you're in, eco plus, eco, normal, or sports. It's not the regen only that determ that's determined by the drive mode. It's also the level of acceleration, ultimately uh, energy consumption. With each driving mode, we can calibrate and adjust and program how fast the vehicle accelerates relative to the revolutions per minute, whichever speed it is. It's rather complicated, actually, to be honest with you. The, just loads of numbers on a screen. But what that means is when you release the accelerator pedal on various settings, the regen braking will engage and you'll start to slow down. Also, when you press the brakes, it doesn't just engage the brakes on the vehicle. Relative to the drive mode, the regen braking on the motor engages and you can see it on the green bar that we'll see when we're driving and that recycles energy back to the battery box. All right, let's do this. Okay, so safety first. Well, should I even put my seatbelt if it goes in flames? And you know, a lot of people <laughs> think EVs go up in flames. Yeah, a lot of people. Anyway, oh. all right, um, ignition on. Yes, on. Already, uh, brake off. That's easy, isn't it? Let's see if it actually works. Who does? All right, let's go. Ah, it's so smooth. I mean, even when you get used to OEM EVs, just all those conversions, they just completely change the way those classic buses and cars work. It just make, like pulls them into the future, keeping all the classic aspect of that. You really get the best of both worlds, especially with something like this. It's funny to have such a large steering wheel. I feel like a trucker, 
Um, but actually, it's quite smooth, yeah. We've got everything here, as you said, I will see when I press the pedal if how much energy goes in. Do you have AC on this thing? Not yet. Not yet, huh? Because if you want to do your world tour crossing Africa and South America, you will definitely want an AC. Absolutely more. Oh, that's, yeah, quite smooth, yeah. You can just cruise and let it drive. So when is the next step? When is the full self-driving uh, combi by Jack's Garage? It's only a matter of time, Jerome. Uh, I think so, yes. I've noticed you're using a BMW or Mini throttle pedal yep. or gas pedal. Or Supplied by Felton. Okay, okay. That comes with the system you use from those guys then, yeah? Mm -hmm. And the brake is still the same, the same brake pedal. Just, you, you've mentioned the power steering, it just works really well. Another optional upgrade uh, from our friends at Lightsteer. One thing I've noticed is typically on converted to electric classic cars or bus or trucks, they're still very noisy, like a lot of metallic sounds. But this is quite um, quiet actually. Yeah, I don't know what the secret recipe is. Obviously it's not fully kitted as a camper van, but as a bus it's surprisingly quiet. And uh, you can push this also. Just cruising, 40 miles per hour. All right, I wonder if we should do a burnout. Well, this was not made for burnout, was it? No. When, so, so when <laughs> <laughs> Let's see how it breaks. Yeah, it feels solid and straight, yeah. When do you want to uh, put your order through, Jerome? Ah, I see where you're going. The thing is, can you do one that's fully kitted out as a camper for four? Absolutely. All right. Mm, It'll be empty. a little bit heavier. Will it just for the, the camper aspect of it? Yeah. yeah. Minor, minor deterioration in the range. Um, yeah, the range with the 55 kilowatt hour. Again, you're just cruising. You, you're never late. Well, I usually say it's never late in a V8, but you're not late in a camper van because you're just cruising and taking your time and enjoying the scenery. Well, maybe not the very best scenery just now, but you get my point. Is there a competition? I, I know you're not the only one doing uh, buses but you're probably the only one offering a bolt-on system uh, on a large scale, aren't you? There is some competition, but in terms of quality and, and uh, where it comes in at price point, yep. I haven't seen anything that even comes close, okay. to be honest. Yep. Which is why I'm so confident that Aziza and her fabulous upcycling second life electric yep. solution with a powered by the Felton Universal battery pack yep. is literally the very best option yep. for anybody looking to give their beloved camper van second life. So Jerome, I'm particularly proud of this London to Amsterdam rally. I've just completed almost 3000 kilometers in Europe. Okay. Without, That's close to 2000 miles. Yeah, <laughs> without any flaws. And so now I'm happy to sell the unit globally. We must as a industry prove to the public that our vehicles, our upcycling solutions are as close to bulletproof as bulletproof can be. Okay. And so therefore, we must all engage in nothing short of rallies, exciting yeah. rallies where we have fun. We show to the, to the world what we are all capable of. Circular EV is part of that movement. However, anywhere in the world, wherever you are, you can begin a rally. You can bring in, begin a movement. So guys, if you like what you saw today, let us know in the comments below. If uh, you want to learn more about Joseph, just go to Jack's Garage. Is there any other website we should know about? jacksgarage.co.uk okay. is getting a makeover as is Circular EV. Circular EV is a, a consortium of EV excellent promoting circularity within the automotive industry, decarbonizing the world in style. And just on a final note, Jerome, if I may, in the words of our future king, Prince William, we owe it to the generations that follow us, our children and our children's children, to be outlandish in our ambition and stubborn in our optimism. Thank you. Fantastic, guys. We'll see you in the next one.